with intelligence part one. I um, happened to do a little different uh, procedure for doing these, so I'm not going to be writing. I'll be using some text, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but let's jump right in. And here we go with the definition of intelligence. So you've heard different definitions of intelligence when you, well, you need, we need to get down to exactly what we're talking about here with psychology. You might have heard like this guy's very basketball smart or this guy's book smart or this guy's street smart. All of those are referring to intelligence, but what is the, the definition of intelligence that we're going to use? Um, so for us, we're going to talk about it's a mental quality and it's talking about basically three things. It's the ability to learn from experience. It's the ability to solve problems and it's the ability to use knowledge to adapt to new situations okay so we're talking about these three things here to learn from experience right so you've probably seen like a dog Man, that dog's stupid right and they do the same thing over and over again they run into a door they keep shocking themselves or they keep hurting themselves right so part of intelligence is learning from your experiences part of it is solving problems so can you, if you're faced with a dilemma, can you uh, navigate that dilemma successfully? And then the other third uh, prong of intelligence is using what you know to adapt to new situations. Um, so when we talk about in a, in a little bit with multiple intelligence, that comes in, in there as well. Um, so we've got these different types of, let's see if I can put that over here for a little second. Um, We've got these different types of, uh, or this, this definition of intelligence, and now we're going to go through a few different like people and their theories of, of intelligence. The first thing that we're going to talk about is uh, this guy named Spearman. He had this thing called the Spearman's G factor, or this general intelligence. And basically, Spearman said that people have this underlying level of intelligence, and that level of intelligence affects everything that they do. Um, so he would say that um, if you're somebody who's really intelligent is going to be able to learn math more quickly than somebody who's less intelligent. And maybe they're not good at history, but if their general intelligence, if this level of general intelligence is high, then they're going to be able to learn history more easily than somebody whose general intelligence is lower. Uh, I kind of tell my students, actually I'm going to try to draw something here. I kind of tell my students that it's kind of like... Um, filling up a, uh, if you got this bottle here, the higher your general intelligence, the higher your starting point is. If this is like 100% and you are a, um, you know, you're, this is like basketball skills or uh, this is like playing chess or something like that. This is 100%, you're like God at it, right? You're 100% awesome at it. As your general intelligence goes up, your starting point for whatever... We're ta talking about, it. you take this container here and you give any, you can put anything in it, right? This could be the container for basketball skills. This could be the container for learning a new language. This could be the container for solving crossword puzzles. Whatever container this is, it can change. But your general intelligence is basically your starting point for whatever you're talking about. Does that, so, uh, so it can change. However, um, a problem with general intelligence and critics of Spearman say, hey, and you can measure general intelligence really well, right? We can do this with intelligence tests, and we're going to see later on in other uh, videos of talking about that. But it's it's very uh, what's called uh, reliable in that you're going to get the same results, and you're going to get results that show somebody's general intelligence. How do we talk about people who are really good at something but maybe really stinky at something as as well? So somebody might be have an amazing memory and might be able to um, you know learn from experiences. And, but they also might stink at something um, like social intelligence. So like being able to interact with others, using knowledge to adapt to new situations. So going in and meeting a new group of people, they don't know how to act with a new group of people. And so there's this disconnect and people are like, well, wait a second. If this general intelligence is high, this guy was amazing at that. How is he so high at that? But yet he's not able to um, bring up his standard when it comes to, you know, interacting with others. Okay. So that's a, you know, the, uh, a negative or a criticism of Spearman's general intelligence. It's also called you know, the G factor, lowercase g. Remember that lowercase g here? That's the, that's the key here. Now, factor analysis is a 
See, that's why I didn't want to use this thing. It does that. Stat. This. Come on, baby. Here we go. Here we go. Big money. Statistic. Maybe if I write it in lowercase. Statistical. Now I look like a first grader. Technique. It's a statistical technique. Um, and basically what it does is it takes a, it tests you and it groups your results into some sort of grouping. Um, so it can look for stuff like word fluency, your verbal comprehension, spatial ability, perceptual sets, numerical ability, inductive reasoning, uh, and memory. So those types of things, all those different things that I listed there, um, those are, go back and rewind this if you want to hear them again, but those are basically the things that factor analysis. So it asks you a whole bunch of questions, kind of like a personality test almost, asks you a whole bunch of questions and groups uh, certain types of questions together. And if you score high on certain types of questions, then you might have a high numerical uh, ability, right? You might be good at math or you might have a good memory or what have you, right? And so that's what factor analysis, and this guy named Thurstone um, came up with that. So there's kind of, uh, there's a few names like Spearman, Thurstone. We're going to see some more. The next one, I think Gardner is coming right up um, that we need to keep in mind for this intelligence stuff. Intelligence is, uh, you know, heavy on the names. All right, so moving on here. And um, actually, yeah, here's our man Gardner right here. You know, he's acting cool. He's, he's the multiple intelligence guy. Um, and like Gardner, I just mentioned like a criticism of Spearman is as this idea, kind of what I described there was savant syndrome. Uh, savant syndrome is where somebody is poor in many areas or one area and really good in another. So if you've seen the movie Rain Man, Dustin Hoffman uh, has savant syndrome, right? A lot of times savant syndrome uh, goes along with uh, autism, uh, not always, but a lot of times it goes with autism and it you know it happens where you're good at one thing and you're not so good at another. And so that's like that criticism of the general intelligence. So Gardner uh, was a psychologist or is a psychologist. And in the 1980s, psychologists were saying, hey, Spearman, we, we, we see your things reliable, but it doesn't explain the savant syndrome. And they're looking for different things. And they wanted to expand intelligence beyond just academic smarts. So they wanted to expand it beyond just, you know, numerical ability, memories, doing well in school, to other stuff, right? Um, and they said, you know, well, people with brain damage, some big research when people with brain damage, they may lose one ability, but they maintain others. And so like, well, wait a second, if general intelligence is true, then if one thing's damaged, everything should be damaged. And that, you know, we, we drew that container, that, that starting point should lower for everything. And it didn't, and it doesn't when you have brain damage in one area. So Gardner uh, is famous for his eight uh, intelligences. Let's see if I can write these real quick. So we've got, ooh, that was interesting. Linguistic, intelligence, um, logical, gosh, man, this is annoying. Logical, mathematic, oh my goodness. Um, let's try to write here. Logical, mathematic, musical, spatial, bodily, kinesthetic, uh, intrapersonal, that means, you know, within yourself. Let's do another one here. Interpersonal, that's between two people and then naturalistic, right? So it's stick. Um, so these are different types, right? These are obviously not like book smart stuff, spatial, uh, artistic, musical with music, bike and aesthetics, like, you know, like you've got basketball smarts, interpersonal, you're good at working with people, interper within, within yourself, knowing yourself, interpersonal, between people, naturalistic. So an example of like, you know, some linguistics, uh, poets, T.S. Eliot would be an example. Uh, logical mathematics, Einstein would be an example of somebody who had in high intelligence for this. Musical, Beethoven. Spatial, Picasso. Kinesthetic, um, any athlete. Intrapersonal, 
uh, with yourself, Freud would be an example. Uh, interpersonal could be Gandhi, naturalistic could be Darwin. So uh, lots of different examples. Uh, support for this, you know, is that you see these different people, right? We see this brain damage, we see these people who can have these different, be really good at something, but maybe lacking in others. So like um, Picasso, you know, maybe we didn't have the interpersonal skills that Gandhi had, but you know, he had a, an amazing spatial intelligence. And um, so that was, you know, support for, for this. The criticism of multiple intelligence, and which continues today, is that there's no reliable tests that you can really test uh, somebody for all these different things. We, we talk about these different people can be intelligent in all these different ways, but psychology is a science and we're not able to test. We don't have a test to be able to do this, right? And if we're going to call something science, we need to be able to test it, right? And then you know, weigh the evidence and support with that. So that's a major criticism of multiple intelligence today. All right, I think we're uh, one more slide here. Um, so theories, and then we got, so we had um, Gardner there, last new guy. So this is the third, fourth name that we're learning about now is uh, Sternberg. Sternberg says, uh, kind of took Gardner's idea, so there's more than one intelligence, there's multiple intelligence, but he basically broke it down into three domains. Um, he said that there is, um, okay, whoa, 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 there we go, analytical intelligence, he said there's creative intelligence, and he said there's practical intelligence, so he kind of broke it down into smaller things, so analytical is, um, uh, let's, that's more of your academic problem solving, Creative would be more of your, oops, I'm sorry guys, I made them start over here. Creative would be more of your um, reacting differently to novel stimuli, right? So something comes up, you're able to adapt to it, multiple solutions, and then practical, you know, would be the ability to perceive, understand, and use emotions correctly, right? And so those are the three, so you need to know these three, analytical, creative, and practical. Let's get rid of this so you can see. Okay, I'm not gonna do it. Um, but analytical, creative, and practical, you need to know those three. Um, let's put some stars next to those bad boys. There we go. Come on, there we go. Look at that. Creative and practical. Know those three if you want to do well in this part. And then you should know the eight um, types of intelligence from Gardner as well. Those are often tested. Um, Sternberg's three intelligences. And then finally, another type of intelligence that gets discussed is emotional intelligence. Um, that's this using, oops. this ability to use emotions and perceive and understand them. All right, so uh, these are the different types of intelligence. Then we talk in, uh, next time about um, assessing intelligence. How do we get that stuff assessed? And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll get this uh, new system here figured out and be a little more polished next time. Thanks.